I didn't know better. It is you. You old bastard. Man, you look good considering. I can't believe it. You're really here. Heard any good gossip? At least that thing wasn't dangerous. I don't dangerous. get it at all. Just floated around a bit. You did it. You rescued Garth. Took your sweet time, all right, but you did it. My grandmother used to call. I never gave up hope. Kind of hard to when every day someone's whispering in your head about their vision of the hero's safe return. Honestly, there were a few times there I wanted to smack Teresa. Anyway, welcome back. So what was it like in there? As horrible as I imagined? Well, never mind. I'll find out soon enough myself. We're back in business! I'm meeting someone who might have some information on, you know, our number three. You should go. You have things to do, people to see. As soon as I have anything we can use, I'll head back to the guild and Teresa will call you. Oh, and welcome back. I missed you. I'm glad that day that Doc wasn't our last goodbye. You should take some time to recuperate before you come to the guild. Don't waste your money on food. Give it to me! Well, now we play a bit of a waiting game. Fortunately, we have to wait some time. Uh, and I, you know, whatever. Oh yeah, between this and the last episode, I've maxed out all my strengths and all my skills. And that's about it. <laughs> I'm not going for the special dag, the, the special... Go from poor to rich! Shh, quiet. The poor red dread. What? Guys, it's got me messed up. The uh, the red dragon gun, just because it's annoying. I tried it a couple times, and I don't want to deal with that. Crystal champion. A lot of these are somewhat repeatable. I don't care about stuffs. Let's... So, yeah. The quickest way to bypass this bit is to just travel uh, from place to place. I'm going to travel to the Temple of Light, because I think I can purchase it as a property now. Hammer has learned the location of the thief. Return to the guild as soon as you can. As you can see, the temple has prospered greatly during your absence. Without your help, this place would be deserted and its people dead or scattered. Ooh, I can be called the chosen one now. Hmm. And you get good points for that, huh? If you do the reverse and slaughter this place and oh gosh it's loud <laughs> and the uh, the evil guys prosper I'm pretty sure you can go purchase them too and there's a way to get it to where you can keep both all around and purchase both but whatever you know but now we just head back to the guild cave and continue the main story did you see hammer she is on her way as well, with the information she's gathered. Our friend has told me much about you. That night in the castle, your sister, I had no idea. If I'd known, I would have stopped him. Sorry it took me so long. Lucian's men are all over the place. You must be Hammer. And you must be Garth, Lucian's lackey. I was made to understand you might be mistrustful. I didn't anticipate your staggering wit and intellect. Oh yeah? And did you anticipate that I like to take a hammer and whack smug little spell flingers? This is not what we're here for. Hammer has information on the third hero. Mostly gathered from a tavern, I hear? Not one, lots of them. I did a proper tour. Right. I think this bloke, the thief, is a pirate called Reaver. He runs the Port of Bloodstone to the southwest. And you got this from some drunk? Yeah. He sailed with Reaver for years. Said they captured hundreds of ships. Doesn't mean he's a hero. Lots of pirates capture ships. 
Reaver takes down galleons with one bullet. High winds, rough seas, a mile away, doesn't matter. He picks off the captain. The more impossible the shot, the quicker the crew surrenders. Impressive. But we're not trying to make Lucin surrender. No, we're not. Bloodstone is surrounded by Wraith Marsh on three sides, and Ocean on the fourth. No matter. We can reach it via Colossus Gate. Not this one. It leads only to Hero Hill. Got another one handy, have you? I built one at my tower. It can get us to Wraith Marsh. Okay, you're a genius. Does it work? It will take some time to activate, but it should work. Should. You must do this together. Lucian has sent men to guard Brightwood Tower. Okay then, let's go. After you, your brilliance. Barbarian. So there's something interesting I want to mention that I that I totally never saw before. He made a cultist gate. Now in, in the first game, I thought they were just kind of there because of the old kingdom. It was lost old kingdom knowledge, which I mean, it very well could have been. But the fact that you can make cultist gates at will—well, not just like conjure them with a snap of your fingers, but that you can build them and then empower them, means that you can bring back the magic of old times. You, you can make teleportation a thing around the world, which I think the hero actually takes into consideration, because slight spoilers for the third game. Uh, you play the children of the hero, who, spoiler alert, wins in the end because it's a video game, and in this game you have to, tra you have to travel hours between places in the in the next game uh, it's implied that well it's not implied it's actually explicitly explained that this guy the hero the, the person you play in this game created this small like pocket dimension sort of thing that your children who you play in in the next game teleports to and then they teleport from there to somewhere else in the world so I'm guessing he learned a thing or two from Gareth here with uh, teleportation. We shouldn't use the front gate. Lucian's men will be expecting us. Follow me. I know another way in. It really is right. And nothing that ancient could possibly contain any wisdom. Actually, be in agreement there. But let's cut this short. We have a lot to do. Now we can stop following and start leading. One of the things I love about this game is that there's just dig spots and and little spots in the water to to get treasure from, and it, it adds a lot to the world compared to the first game when. The first game is super linear. I have a blade with your name on it. Uh oh, bandit time. But in this game, it's different. Nice. Uh, cause like it's all over the place and it's awesome. All right, well I guess I'll just shoot that guy to death. Uh, I had a train of thought that I completely forgot. <laughs> again, again, every time. Uh. Yeah, it's, it's cool, because it, it definitely adds more to the world. It, it makes the world more alive and, and like, an open world that you're exploring compared to 
the first game, which it was just a bunch of paths, really. Basically like Final Fantasy XIII, cough, cough. Uh, but, you know, this game isn't no Fallout, so... It's, it's not, like, legit open world like a Fallout game or a Bethesda game in general would be. Unfortunately, that would be amazing. But it's it's far more open world than the other one is. It's it's basically like an expanded path game, you know? There are paths, but leading from place to place that you'll follow. But there are also a bunch of side paths, which which really makes the difference between a game like thirteen, Final Fantasy thirteen and you know, like another game, I guess. And I guess like Final Fantasy thirteen too, or whatever. Where there are and and ooh, silver key. And this game and in later games. Don't worry, I got a collectible guides for these. Uh, like this game in the first game, and this game in the next game, is yeah there are like in the first game yeah there are paths, but here you can choose to not follow that path, and you could just go all over the place. There are a bunch of side paths, side areas. It's beautiful. And there's something good here, hopefully. Lucian's men, they're looking for me. They're between us and the Colors Gate. We'll have to fight our way through. Yeah. Just how I like it. I don't know why the uh, the tracker was still there. I think the quest tracker thing is updated or is improved in the next game compared to this game. Uh, and since I have upgraded skills, then these guys should be a lot easier. Now, I, I took some time in between the uh, last episode and this episode to really upgrade my skills to kind of counteract the fact that I'm not going to go for the uh, two of the weapons that I, I previously wanted. I don't know why I'm collecting that anymore. Really, the only things I can buy now are spells, and I don't really have enough time to conjure more than level one or two of spells. But, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna... Th there's a really powerful legendary sword, uh, katana-based weapon, that I'm not gonna get, that people consider the best of, like, all the melee weapons. Uh, I'm not gonna get because the augments on it. Legendary weapons have preset augments compared to, like, just finding a Master Blade, or whatever. Try Master Sword, I guess. Yeah, and so forth. But... The, the difference is... I just, I just can't not collect this stuff. It's gonna go to waste if I don't. I pass it on to my children, or whatever. But... Uh, thoughts, words... Um, oh, I'm quickly losing that train. Ooh, hello. I don't know what this is, but I'll get it. Yeah, uh, Legendary Katana is called the Daichi or something, which has uh, it's not worth it at all. Which has some some strong augments to make it stronger, have electricity, and make you more attractive. I don't care for that. I like what I have now, which is uh, I steal health, which is amazing. It saves me from healing and dying constantly. Also, I deal more damage and I take less damage. It's just so good. It's so good. And sure, I could probably take dudes out with another in another hit or two, but the fact that I have that on both my my master pistol, flintlock pistol, and my master katana blade is just it's just so powerful. And I don't really need to upgrade the weapons. And if you want to see it, then I mean, I told you how to do it. Just that mini game, just get really good at it. I still don't have the patience for it. Because I am I am running a second Oh, this guy requires not much effort at all. I I am playing a second playthrough alongside this. Uh, that's an evil playthrough that to record that stuff and also to uh, show all the collectibles. So I'd be getting it twice, because if I'm getting it for one player, I'm gonna have to get it for the other. Just to make it, you know, seem right and I don't want to do that twice especially since it will take me several tries just to get it once on one player 
Now, I don't know why we couldn't just go through the front. I mean, we... If it's... It's one, one group... I'm just gonna kill these guys anyways. Whatever. If one group heard us... I mean, we're not necessarily quiet. We got guns and lightning. Then... Surely multiple groups will hear us, and then they all come flying at us. So... I mean, it's, it's not like Far Cry or something where you can you can take out one small group. You can go th you can go around the back to where there's a weaker set of enemies, fewer enemies, take them out, and then sneak in that way and avoid like massive amount of frontal assault. It's not like that at all. You know, it's, uh, it's gonna fight them all anyway. It's... Oh wow! Thanks for weakening me, I guess. Oh yeah, I also got a beard. I don't know if I mentioned that. I don't know. Probably. I figured... I don't like how... In in the first game... Uh, when you would go to the prison... And... Spoiler alert for the first game if you haven't seen it, but if you haven't seen them, why are you watching this one, not that one? When you go to the prison, you're stuck there for at least a year. Or two, I think. I at least a year. And you grow a beard after. After 10 years in Spire here, you don't grow anything. I guess because it's, you know, regulation. You have to regulate and not have any uh, fair hair or whatever, whatever as a guard. But I like I don't like big time lapses and you not having some kind of facial hair. So I got myself a nice big bushy beard. Also, my hair's super great even though it's, I'm like 20-something or I'm like 30. Come on, Garth. Not only, uh, oh, that's fine, nice. So yeah, you can just create a Colus Gate and power it with magic, which kind of becomes obsolete later, In because in the third game, slight spoilers for the third game, your, your child, son or daughter, you get to choose, which is neat, doesn't have innate magical powers. In fact, they don't have... They don't have the, the ability to channel will as you do, and they get the ability to use spells in the form of potions, which and, and gauntlets, gauntlets for most every spell, but potions, which are very limited for only a few certain spells, which I hate because they're the most powerful of the spells, and you know they are because they turn them into potions. Uh, the only potion, the only spells you can use through potions are the uh, the summoning po the summoning spells. And the time stop spells. You, you can clearly see why they turn them into potions, because they're just so damn powerful. Like, I mean, time stop just in the first game and this oh my god, look how much health I got back. In the first game and this game just well this game's a little it's a little nerfed, but in the first game it was just so powerful that you could just obliterate hordes of enemies before they even have the chance to interact with you. And in this game not so much, but still really powerful. And in both games, summon enemies is so, so good. So strong that it's almost too OP. Like on my, like my other playthrough as the, uh... Oh, freaking... Yeah, I get it, you can parry. Uh, as the evil dude... Evil lady, rather. You can, um... I summon the I summon the guys every all the time, and they everyone just completely ignores me and goes for them most of the time, which is awesome. And they just pull up my gun and just slice them apart. Slice them apart with my gun. I shoot them with my gun. That's that's what you do with a gun. You shoot, not slice. Ah. So I'm only halfway done with this, unfortunately. Ah, I missed. Ooh, this would be a really good time for summons. Oh, what the heck are you doing, though, guy? 
What? What? <laughs> okay. Clearly not all the kinks have been worked out of this game. To be fair, it's a big game. It's, it suffers kind of Bethesda game problem. Not, not really, not at all, but... I mean, it's a big game. Ben Garth, I'm doing it. This is part takes a while. More than I'd like. And it's not at all that exciting. If it was almost finished, you're not even you're barely over halfway, man. Don't don't do this to me. Oh. So it's so, such a riveting riveting part of the game. It's slicing down hordes of, of randos. Look at all the experience, though. If you weren't max level at this point, which, to be fair, I could have been max level way earlier on, this would have been, like, gravy. This would have been the gravy train. Just slowly turn. Thanks for waiting. It's like the, the classic uh, villain trope. It's like, oh, I, I won't stab you in the back. Like the smart thing to do, I will wait until you you see me and I do my speech before I attack you. Like with classic Final Fantasy JRPG villains. Oh, also it also happened in the first game actually. Oh my gosh, I'm being I am being abused and all right, let's get out of here or not. Come on, yeah, suck it. Uh, like in the first game where it's like, oh, this little child that will one day grow up to kill me and or be the most powerful entity in existence for the forces of good. Instead of slaughtering you when you have absolutely no power now, I will raise you. Or I will let you go and let you get the ultimate weapons and ultimate armor and level up maxed and get a bunch of friends to help you and aid you in your journey so that you may slaughter me. 